so what exactly is all this and what's my plan? Thanks for joining me on a closer glimpse and uh, let's dive right into it. Okay, so what is all of this? I mean, I've been known for plywood for a long time on my main channel and you know, putting it on the walls, French cleats, you name it. In fact, my whole entire shop is clad in this stuff. I figured now is as good a time as any, now that I've got a CNC to make some products and put them out to the world. Use some ideas I've had in my head for a little bit and to see what we can do. So I'm gonna explain what this business venture is right now on this channel. It's not live yet and I just wanna get some feedback. This is kind of the, the channel I go to for that. All right, let me explain, <laughs> let's go. Okay, so <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, tell you what guys, I'm going to give you a little insight, a little closer glimpse on what I'm doing. Um, and thanks for being here in advance. So this, you might recognize this as a cornhole set. Um, it's in multiple stages here. Um, first of all, before I get started on that, I'm going to tell you, um, I've started a new Instagram account. It's linked down below. It's called why not ply. Okay. Basically it's another business. It's another business idea that I've had for a little while. And with the help of Penguin CNC, I'm going to be able to launch this in the next few weeks. So <clears throat> I've been working behind the scenes on quite a few products and I want your thoughts. One is already kind of been out there a little bit on Instagram. Um, these sets, I have beta testers out in the world, putting them together, giving me feedback. Thank you so much. I've, sh I've shipped four of them throughout the country and three of them here locally. And I've gotten really good feedback. And I want to appreciate each and every one of you who've done that. So um, essentially, <clears throat> here's what it is. And this is kind of the final uh, product here and you'll get it in a, a form factor like this. It's essentially going to be 17 by 11 by 17 smaller scale indoor outdoor lots of fun. I'm, I'm actually hand sewing the bags here as well A um, couple different iterations um, I decided that the handle when you fold it all up would be good at the bottom Which is really not that great because bags can they can fall through. Okay, it's all half inch plywood You see here. Here's, here's an example of the bag um, the new version basically has, when you combine the two boards together, I haven't put the, the clasps on here yet, but the handle is bigger, okay? And the fact that there's no handle at the bottom hole, there's no hole at the bottom, the bags can stay put. So here's the first product. It's coming to market much sooner than what you're gonna see now. I'm gonna show you a couple things and let me show you my other kind of weird All right, so this next thing I'm gonna show you uh, I was sitting in my recliner. My wife and I were watching what, The Masked Singer or something, some, some silly show. Um, and when the show was over, I said, I have to go to the shop. I have an idea and I, it's, been, it's been bugging me. I got to see if I can do this. Uh, long story short, I came out here. I, <clears throat> in Vectrix VCarve Pro, um, kind of designed this thing and was out here till almost 2.30 in the morning. Um, and out came this. All right, and still to this day, I actually like this one the best. This is the first prototype, but there's a couple things that were wrong with it. One, everything is um, put in with basically box joints. Um, these recess into here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any that are really disassembled at the moment, but um, the fact is, is I wanted everything to be a compression joint that wouldn't need glue. But the problem with this version is that it's a little, I mean, it's, it's strong enough probably, uh, but I needed to actually put these supports a little more spaced out just to give the table a little more rigidity. And yes, it is a table. So as you can see here, here's a nice <laughs> tool path that basically this thing sits in. And this was the first mock-up. This is the first iteration of what I'm calling the Man of War table. It reminds me of a jellyfish. Um, you'll see there's a sea creature theme here and that, that was by accident. But um, yeah, so this is kind of what got me thinking. Um, the next thing I developed was this thing again. And I'll show you the second so, iteration here. There is another thing too. Um, I was making this out of 5 8 inch Baltic. I figured I'd go to three quarter inch. Uh, this is American ply. Reason uh, I made the switch, one, um, if you don't know, Baltic birch, um, well, Russia is basically the global supplier of it. And there's a national, a national, a global shipping container shortage. And what is that, what, what's causing uh, that, we don't know. Somehow the pandemic, I maybe everybody's living in shipping container homes, who knows. Uh, but it's easier for Russia to just, transport this stuff by truck domestically and to the EU. Um, so they're not shipping it over here. Um, and, and actually a lot of the smaller Baltic factories um, have been out of business now because of the pandemic. So 
This stuff is really hard to come by. Uh, my local dealer hopefully is going to source them by the summer. We don't know. I really want to make this stuff out of Baltic. Uh, but for now, we're making that domestic U.S. ply, which is pretty cool. And this was the second iteration of this. And you can see, I don't know, it's just not as cool looking. It doesn't flare enough. Uh, I did separate these two supports, and everything in here is, is like wicked. Oh my gosh, you can't even pull this apart now. Uh, and the tolerances were just too tight. So <clears throat> working with, you know, I, I'm not really the best digital fabricator. I have these ideas in my head, um, but I have to spend a lot of time learning this program. And uh, I'm getting there. I am getting there. But this was the second iteration and essentially the same kind of top. I thought maybe, you know, that, that's not very good. Am I going to come up with brackets underneath? You know, what am I doing? So then this whole time I'm going to leave this one here. Um, this went through another couple changes and then I finally landed on this. The tabletop's just a little bit bigger. And here it is. And these tolerances are... You can push these in by hand, but when they're in there, they're pretty snug. Uh, you might need a, a rubber mallet to get them out. The idea is, is that I don't want people to have to use glue. You can if you want, of course. Uh, this thing will be absolutely indestructible. indestructible. It'll be uh, much, <clears throat> you won't be able to take it apart, let's put it that way, if you use glue, which is not a bad idea. Uh, and then the tabletop now has, instead of a massive big trough cut in, we've got basically recesses here. And that way you know exactly when you're in place and you're good to go. Now, you can absolutely um, screw this down if you want. You can glue it in place, put a couple of dabs of glue in here, and then just kind of put a couple books on it for an hour and you'll be good to go. So this is basically the product that I'm going to take to market. This is what I'm calling the Man of War end table. And yeah, I'm pretty excited about it too. Uh, I am going to be making a, another tabletop for it because essentially you can turn it this way, okay? If I can get it off these dog holes here. All right, turn it this way. And the idea, <laughs> now I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna fashion another piece of wood with probably some uh, grooves cut in the bottom for proper alignment. And of course it won't be this big, but it's a coffee table, all right? It's your standard coffee table height if you turn it the other way around. And another cool feature is that it has these little shelves. So if you want to put little tchotchkes, little knickknacks, all kinds of stuff. And the tabletop, you, of course, it'll come with this one, and this will be an extra option if you would like. At least that's the idea. Who knows? All right, now, a couple other smaller things that I'm developing, and uh, we'll wrap this thing up. <clears throat> okay, again, prototypes, all right? So... I mean, honestly, how cool is the CNC, really? I mean, how cool is this? I, you know, I've been a retail manager for 23 years, and, and that's, that's been my livelihood um, for as long as I can remember. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this um, 100%, but you know what? I mean, this is, this is the closest I've ever come to thinking that I might be able to launch something. And with, you know, of course, the YouTube channel, and the various income streams that are, that are coming in, um, which aren't huge, by, by the way. Um, but I want to make them well, a little more profitable um, so I can build this. Um, so I can be there for those three kids and that beautiful wife I have in there. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, how cool is this? So this was going to be, I really didn't know. I was just making something. I thought maybe I could make a double layered planter um, while you're building this. Again, box joints, just, everything just kind of shoves in place. Um, a fake plant for, for scale here. Um, this is called Thrones. This is what um, I developed on, on the CNC. Uh, I think it's super cool. Um, it also rolls, but that doesn't matter. And this it has so many applications. One, the first thought was a planter. Okay, that's pretty cool. The second thought maybe was upside down a hanging light fixture. Or even right side up, a small lamp. You know, a nightlight in there. That'd be kind of cool, too. Um, this octopus is what I developed as well uh, because I wanted to make a children's nightlight that would go up underneath. And that, that was the, the brainchild behind this. This was a nightlight. Um, my buddy Jeremy came over and goes, well, give me that planner. He's like, dude, that's, <laughs> that's badass. He goes, I'm a member of this massive Facebook group with all these plants and the people love them. So I posted a couple pictures and people were like, yeah, that's awesome. Are you selling them? So I mean, who knows what life this is going to take. And uh, you can also turn the damn thing 
Sorry. <laughs> you can also turn the thing upside down and I can fasten something to hang it from. And then you can hang multiple plants from it as well. I, I just, you know, the possibilities here are endless and it's really cool. And so, of course, this octopus here and this planter here, I mean, my goodness, you can, you can even stack them on top of each other if you want. Got me thinking about something else. And this is the last one before I let you go. And it is a much more robust octopus. You think, yeah, it's kind of silly. Well, the idea here is that it too can be a smaller table. Um, again, I haven't fastened, I haven't cut the top for this one yet. Uh, but there is another idea in my head of maybe making two of these as two bases and then a longer table on top. I mean, who knows? Um, but what I am going to be doing is this table here, what I'm calling the Man of War, this is coming to market. Um, and something to do with this octopus as well. Probably the octopus table will be coming to market as well. Um, those two things I'm definitely going to try. Uh, I will say this. <clears throat> when I was cutting these pieces out, let me show you. They haven't even been sanded yet. Um, this is basically how this fits together. And these, I mean, how weird looking are these? They look like stomachs. Or in, in a post I made today, like the snakes from, you know, level two in Zelda from the old NES. Um, <laughs> who knows? Crazy stuff. When I was developing this and, and modeling this in VCarve, I was like, is this, is this gonna work? And then I, you, know, you can mirror the image and flip it around and do all kinds of stuff. I said, like, yeah, it looked pretty cool. It's not gonna be as whimsical as this one, which is more balloon-like, but this is kind of more, I don't know, it's not realistic, but a little more, I guess, on the, on the fantasy side than the, the kid side. Um, yeah, okay. So, sorry to be long-winded on this one. Actually, I'm not sorry. I appreciate you being here and listening to what I have to say and, and supporting me and doing all the things that you guys do on this channel. You guys are unbelievable here. And, um, so this is a, it's been it's, it's been a long long few weeks um, just to just to do this as busy as life is, and I will say this in closing, because you see and see something and put it to market doesn't mean you're hitting a button and you're just you're good to go you're doing nothing. Um, I have to be here and maintain these cuts. Some of these cuts this octopus takes you know I mean the whole thing takes about 20 25 minutes to cut the whole thing. Um, then I got to take them off. I got to sand each one. My hands are still very much in this. All these, I mean, I'll, let me give you a close up here. All these pieces here, okay, are, they need to be sanded. I'm not going to, I'm not going to deliver this thing to you like this. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to hand sand each of these, uh, use my orbital sander and a couple little hand sanding techniques. Um, I'm getting pretty quick at it. And I'm going to batch these out, and I'm hopefully um, going to be able to, to sell a few of these things. It's a cool process. Uh, the idea, the business model that I think, with not only from the cornhole to this, to these tables and whatnot, is I give you a building or an assembly experience, and then you have something that is functional or something that is fun to do. Right? That's the idea here behind what we do at a glimpse inside. And then, again, with this venture called Why Not Ply, is that, yes, it's an experience that could be functional for you after you're done. And that's the idea. Whew, I want to know your thoughts. And um, thanks for listening. Looking to hear uh, what you guys have to say down below. Thanks again.